Hello and welcome back to an introduction to time series in R. Today we're going to be talking about the, using the decompose function in R. So the decompose function actually produces an interesting output. It breaks down your data set or your time series into several different components. So if you look on the left side, you'll see the actual what is the AP time series. So this is air passengers time series and you're going to see a couple different patterns that kind of exist in this data set. You see uh, a seasonality, this up and down motion that seems to be pretty cyclical, as well as a trend. So it goes up pretty straightforward um, and an upward motion. And when you end up pulling this data out using the decompose function, the decompose function actually breaks it down into, again, that trend, what you're seeing, the seasonal component, and this random component. So this is kind of the leftovers or the residuals from those two data sets. So this lets you see that this data set's actually built up of multiple patterns and, and kind of lets you understand about how the ARIMA model is going to end up predicting these different pieces and how you can start editing that ARIMA model if you need to. One other important component to understand is that you can actually use two different types of parameters when you uh, run the decompose function, which we'll talk about here shortly. You can use the additive version, which basically takes the seasonal component plus the trend component plus the random component and that will equal your time series. Similarly, there's a multiplicative uh, type as well and this basically looks more like seasonal times trend times random. So this is more of when a data set is not just additional but you're almost seeing an exponential growth over time. So, so the multiplicative is when you, you don't just see a solid growth so you're not just seeing you know seasonal plus trend that would make sense if your trend was consistent and your seasonal was consistent so you had if you can imagine there was a consistent up and down wave and a very consistent upward growth so let's take a moment to kind of look at this in r all right now that we're back let's look at the air passengers data set so this is one of those data sets that exist in r and you can just call by saying air passengers. And I'm gonna set it to the, the variable AP. So if we plot this and run this, you'll see it's the very same time series we were looking at earlier in the PowerPoint. And now I'm gonna use the plot decompose to kind of show what it looks like. So using that plot decompose, you'll recognize this again, but one thing I didn't point out is if you look at this random uh, final bottom uh, graph, you'll notice that at the beginning, there's kind of a pattern there, right? Like there's, there's kind of a consistent pattern. And then similarly at the end, there's this consistent pattern. Yes, the middle is kind of pretty well guessed. The, in fact, the residuals are pretty much left over and it's almost zero. If you look at this, the error is almost zero in this middle section, but these sides almost look like they have their own pattern. And this is kind of indicative of a time series that's not additive. Remember this, this uh, decompose function defaults to additive. So we could actually say instead, I wanna do the multiplicative model. So instead you say type equals multiplicative. So when I set type equals multiplicative, it's going to assume that the data set is again, multiplicative. So it's gonna take that uh, trend times seasonal times random approach. So if we run this, you'll notice that suddenly this error becomes much smaller. Uh, if you look at the range between the error and also there, there's less of a pattern on both sides. This has become more of random noise and less of like a consistent pattern on these two outer points. So the, this kind of hints that this is a multiplicative model. So if I replot this AP data series, I'll show you what I mean when I say it's multiplicative. So if you look at this model or this time series, you'll see that one, yes, it has a pretty consistent upward trend, but there's something interesting about it, right? Because every month on top of this upward trend, You've, you've got a growth, a giant growth, you know? So this uh, cycle over here is much bigger than this cycle over here in, in 1954 versus somewhere later in 1960. So this is kind of stating that it's more multiplicative and not just a consistent upward and downward motion. And we're gonna go over a time series that is more uh, additive later when we talk about detrending time series, but it's just a great way to kind of look at this and see like this is not just, um, this time series doesn't just have a pattern of seasonality and trend, but it also has this exponential growth that needs to be considered. So you can, one of the cool things about uh, this decompose function is that you can actually run this decompose function and set it to an object. 
and it will have several different components. You can actually start pulling out this like seasonal component. So for instance, let's run this uh, decomposed uh, AP uh, variable. So now I've got one that represents that uh, decompose AP type multiplicative and let's plot it. And so this is actually just your uh, seasonal uh, component that you saw earlier with the, for the data series where you saw there were four of them, but now I'm just pointing at the, the seasonal component. So this is kind of great if you can, if you want to pick out just the seasonal and possibly trend, and then maybe use a third model, or sorry, second model to predict the random noise. Because maybe sometimes, especially in finance, that random noise might have some predictability. Um, there might be some reasoning behind it that's kind of, it seems random, but you as a financial analyst, as a data analyst can actually know why. So pulling out that, that randomness is a great way to kind of pull apart this data set and predict different components. Um, and then you can almost start uh, setting these things uh, to basically equal uh, each other. I'm actually kind of, so um, when I say that, I mean like if you saw, if you remember earlier where I used that times series, uh, where I said, you know, uh, the trend time the, times the seasonal times the, the random, you can actually do this uh, and set that to a variable just to kind of see how this recomposes itself. So if, if we run this again and then plot it, you'll kind of see this data set takes on that same form, right? Like I've, I've basically just said, um, multiply these different uh, components and then you'll see this is a very similar data set. The one difference is at the end, it doesn't go all the way. This is because the trend component uses the moving average functionality. So it, it kind of chops off both ends because when you calculate a moving average, you don't use all of the data points. But it's just kind of great to see. So for instance, I could actually use a, a line over it and run the, the same data set over and you'll see, yes. So one, it'll complete off this data set, but it pretty much perfectly matches this data set. So when you start building things back together again, you can actually use this multiplication or if you use an additive model, addition to put things back together and to predict different components. So if you, if you were to, for instance, build a model for each one individually, you could do it yourself. And then again, add them together or multiply them together and, and have, again, a matching data set. So that's all I was going to talk about today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me uh, and have a great day.